Hello YouTubers! wanted to give you a quick tour of the LCC system on the Great Northwestern, at least as of where it stands today. Um, basically, I've set them up with a number of hubs. i got a total of three hubs I'm going to show you here today. I'm showing a hub as a place where uh, we've got multiple nodes, LCC nodes, mounted. First of all, take a look. Notice that I've mounted these things on a piece of half-inch plywood. Nothing too sophisticated. A couple one-by-twos provide a great little slide-out, pull-out shelf. This lets me get to things without having to crawl underneath the layout. In the past, I've mounted electronics directly to the bench work, but I'm finding it's really nice to be able to sit and work on the electronics in a convenient way. So this just hangs underneath the layout. You can see it just hanging underneath the staging yard here, and then I've got the main deck above that. So just coming down a couple layers, it lets me sit on a nice rolling chair and get in there. Here are the nodes. These are LCC nodes. In this particular case, this is a tower LCC. This one's a signal LCC. These are two products put out by RR Circuits. But let me back up a little bit. All these nodes are interconnected with an Ethernet cable. So you'll see the Ethernet cable is daisy chained between the nodes, and then it goes off to the next hub. On the very end of your daisy chain, and they do have to be daisy chained, there's no star configuration or anything. You just start on one end, you work your way through to the other end. You have to have what's called a terminator. This is the terminator. The other thing you need somewhere along the line is a power point. This particular one is an RR Circuits power point. Basically feeds power into the LCC network. Um, it's uh, just a regulator. So um, you can power all the different nodes. It's all powered through the Ethernet cable. So Ethernet comes into the first hub, our first node. In this particular one's a tower LCC. Tower has two accessory slots. In this particular case, the slot I'm using is uh, SMD8. Basically, it provides power. Uh, it, it energizes uh, turnouts. So we've got two ribbon cables coming off of it, and they power the turnouts. These are stall motor devices. You can see the cable comes up here, comes through the bench work, and then I just simply have them going to the various stall motor drives coming out of my staging yard. You can see in the background there the second ribbon cable. And these are all originating straight from this tower LCC right here. Um, I'm going to get into it a little bit here. These are This is the power for the SMD8s and I'll show a little bit more on that and, and as we go to one of the other nodes. The other uh, node here that I have is an, a signal LCC in this particular case. I'm taking in signals on detection through CTs, current transformers, and uh, they just go directly into the board through this uh, BOD8. BOD8, that's the um, card that's being used there. For detection, um, I'm bringing all of my block cables. Every block, I'm bringing uh, a wire back. And um, uh, I understand that you could do this detection underneath the layout, but I wanted to do it again. I want to keep it convenient. So I bring all my cabling back to some terminal blocks here. These are the feeders coming from the main breakers. And then I've got feeders going to the individual uh, blocks out on the layout. For each one of the feeders then that I pull out, I have a um, current transformer, a CT. These are also supplied by RR circuits. It basically detects current by, um, by the in induction of that current going through a coil. The signals, I'm just using um, Ethernet cable, just cut short, and you bring it right back into your BOD-8s. Real simple. On this side, more CTs, all coming into the BOD-8s. These particular ones are detecting um, progress through my helix. To connect, by the way, on the, on the stall motor drives, I have these connectors here. These are provided also by RR circuits, and the ribbon cable you can buy as a spool. Uh, real easy to use. You just slip the ribbon cable through this opening, uh, clamp down on it, and then you can uh, you know, have your, your cable. I'll show more of that in a bit. Okay, so this is one of my nodes. Those are the major components. You've got the power point. You've got cables jumper in between them. Then the gray cable jumpers over to my next node. Again, it's uh, very similar in construction and design. Here's a package of those CTs, current transformers. Plans for my next signal LCC node that's coming in, plus an SMD8. That's a 
going to be for stall motor drives on the main line in this particular case. Um, in this one, I have a signal LCC, and it's tied to more detection blocks. Uh, you can see that we actually have one, uh, one of the blocks are occupied, and so it's showing that. On this side, I have a tower LCC bringing in two sets of BOD-8s. Uh, these are um, all for my staging yard, so I need a lot of detection. Real simple. One of the notes, you don't want to be less than uh, a foot, so I bought some 18-inch jumpers that connect between nodes. I, you know, you can buy 6-inch Ethernet jumpers, but they're too short for whatever reason. Just something to keep in mind. You want to keep at least a, a foot, so I went to 18 inches for your jumpers between nodes. And uh, over here you can see huge number of cables again from my staging yard. We have 27 different blocks coming in there. So we have all of our CTs, current transformers. We have the jumpers going back over to the BOD-8s. And of course all the cabling, which ends up going up to different blocks. I wanted to bring it all to the central point to make it easy to maintain. I'm gonna run over here, come along the staging yard. We'll go to our third hub in this particular case. This is also where our power is fed. A couple more nodes here. Both of these are tower LCCs. You can tell because they have two cards, two slots for cards. Same as before, this is the gray cable coming from the previous hub. Short jumper, 18 inch jumper. Then the yellow cable will take me over to a power point. Here's another power point. One of the things I learned is that RR circuits recommends no more than 30 feet between power points. And I'm right on the edge, I'm about 30 or 35 feet. So just to make it a robust system, I have a power point on this end. And then as you saw before, I have a power point on the other end. While we're here, here's a sample of um, a connector for connecting the SMD8s. Uh, these are the stall motor drives. Basically, you can buy this uh, cable from our circuits and the connector. You just clamp it down. And it, makes a good solid connection and that's what you use to tie directly into your uh, SMD8 uh, controller board. On the other end, this cable comes apart very easy, very easy to um, break apart. So you've got uh, four different motor drives, leads one, two, three, four. The middle two are not used. It's actually, um, I believe it's energized, but I never use it. And then um, so this is the first stall motor, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and eight. On the other end are the last two. So a total of four stall motors that can come off of each one of these ribbon cables. You got two, two sets of ribbon cables for each uh, SMD8. So it's a total of eight stall motor drivers. Other things here that I was uh, want to highlight. For the stall motor drivers, you don't want to power the stall motor drivers directly from the uh, LCC bus. So you've got a power bus, that's what the power point is for. Um, so you have a power bus for the uh, signals, but you, for your stall motors you want to have a separate input. And that's what uh, the RR circuits boards are providing right here. You've got an auxiliary input for power that just goes directly to the stall motor uh, power circuits. I brought these back to a distribution block, a terminal block, and then I have a 12 volt power supply on this side that buses it together. And I got enough power here that I can um, power other things that will need 12 volts in the future. And over here, I've got um, more detection, again, for the staging yard and for the main line, for my different decks. All that's going over into these two um, BOD-8s, so a total of 16 detection blocks right over here. One of the things you'll find is that the amount of wiring you can pack into these is actually quite remarkable. So it's more of an issue of how do you manage your wiring than really the capability of the system. It's an incredibly robust system. So zooming back a little bit, I've got a 4X PSX breaker system, four of them, um, basically feeding in on one end, daisy chain them out, and then you've got your different feeders going to different parts of the layout. And then, like I say, I bring those into these terminal blocks, which then feeds the different blocks on the layout. The last piece I want to show you here today is this purple cable. The purple cable comes out and through the bench work, jumps over here 
to the USB interface. Of course, the USB interface is where the computer ties in. I've got a computer in another room, a little section of the room backed off here. That'll be the dispatcher's office. But basically, this um, forms the very end or the last node on this LCC network. Note that there's a terminator on the end of it, denoting that's the end of the system. If I want to expand it, I pull the terminator off, and then I daisy chain off to whatever else I want to build out in the future. So there you have it, guided tour of the different pieces of our LCC system. Hope it's been helpful. Um, really love the system, and I'll continue to share more as I learn more about it. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments section on this video, and I'm more than happy to answer them. Take care. Bye.